Good morning, everyone. We'll just give a few minutes to let everyone get into the webinar and then we'll get rolling. Okay, well, thanks for joining me today. Today is day two zero, day 20 of the 30 Day Profit Challenge. I'm really thankful for you to be here today, and I'm really looking forward to diving into the content. We've got a, our sort of our second last step today of the commercial funnel to cover off, and then tomorrow. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, we've today got some feedback here. Hold on a second here. Day 20 of the 30 Day Profit Challenge. Sorry about that. We had some weird echoing feedback, but. Uh, Long story short, we appreciate you being here today. And uh, today we're gonna get into the second last day of the 30 day profit challenge of the conversion funnel. And so without further ado, let's dive right into it. So today we're gonna talk about buyers to spenders and how do we convert buyers into spenders so we're going to keep working our way down this conversion funnel that we've been stepping our way through for the last couple of days you know from the first day we talked a bit about visitors and how they convert into browsers browsers into shoppers shoppers into buyers and so from buyers today we're going to talk about how to convert those people into spenders and then tomorrow what we'll do is we'll cap things off with looking at your customers and so that we can look at this whole conversion funnel end to end Again, we're using these sort of steps within the site of your e-commerce store to kind of determine where those key sort of steps or milestones are that people are becoming either a browser or a shopper. So along the right-hand side, what we're showcasing here is all the different steps in your e-commerce funnel and also the pages that are recording these steps along the way. So if we go back to our store example, we've been using this sort of Dubai shop as our sort of case study to showcase where you are at in that conversion funnel. So when we first started, we looked at, you know, at a visitor level, sort of, you've just come to the store, you're maybe not even ready to look at any products. You maybe want to go to the blog or you came in from an FAQs page. Perhaps you weren't ready quite yet to look at any sort of product, but as you're kind of interested in this brand, it's like, oh, that new brace looks interesting. And perhaps you went over here to shop now. That would now turn you into a browser. And so as a browser, you are now browsing around the website. You're looking at products. Again, I liken it to being in sort of the department of a department store. You've got into the store and now you're into a specific department, maybe the men's department or the women's department or somewhere else that you're in a department store. Or maybe you're just in a store in general and you're looking around at products. So if that bracelet that you were looking at earlier is kind of something that's interesting and, and kind of fancies you, you would want to maybe click through and see and now you're considered a shopper. Shopper is someone who has come into the store, looked around at some product, and now they're shopping for product. They've actually picked something up off the shelf. Maybe they've looked at it on a hang tag. Maybe they are also looking at, hey, this is something interesting. And so they've taken that product and they're actually looking at it and showing some interest. But let's say, for example, you really want to, you want to understand, well, where do people go next? Well, in a traditional shopping cart or shopping experience, you would have a cart or a shopping bag that you could add something to. So in e-commerce world, we talk about add to cart. And so if someone adds things to the cart, they're now showing that they're an active buyer and they're someone that is really ready to buy this product. And uh, someone that you want to probably continue to work through understanding what else could they buy? What else do they maybe want to sell to this customer? And so if we go into the cart, you see that sometimes there's also other suggested products. And this would be similar as if you were, you know, you're going down the checkout, you're maybe going down an aisle of a store and you see, Maybe there's some extra things that it's like, hey, you're buying a pair of shoes. Maybe you need a shoe cleaner to go with that or a pair of socks or maybe some other things that round out that purchase to give you a full, complete picture of what is possible from this particular brand or retailer. So in this case, you know, we've shown the cart and there's also some interesting products maybe below. But once you're ready to put down your credit card, that's when we hit the checkout. And this is what we call spenders. So today we're talking about spenders as people that are ready to buy something from your, pro from your store. They've added it to their cart 
And now they're ready to put in their credit card details and all their information that they need in order to complete the purchase. And so, you know, we're going to look at the math now and understand how that works in sort of the traditional uh, e-commerce funnel. So when we looked at the funnel, we started off at the top again, we looked at visitors to browsers and what those people look like. Then we looked at shoppers and what they look like and then buyers. And now today what we're going to look at is the individual conversion rate of buyers to spenders and what that conversion rate looks like. And what we've been looking at is the add to cart versus the checkout. And we're using this 50% mark as sort of a placeholder along the way, because if we do the math, if you look at 50% and then 50% and 50% and 50%, we're gonna eventually get to that 3% conversion rate overall that Amazon has kind of been the benchmark that people will strive for. So let's take a little bit deeper look into the math. So we've got buyers to spenders. And in the buyers to spenders on the left-hand side of the equation, we're gonna look at just those spenders versus buyers. So we have our 62,500 from that previous example of buyers over our 125,000, uh, sorry, 62,500 spenders over 125,000 buyers. And that's gonna yield us that 50% conversion rate. But if you're taking doing the math from the total start of the funnel at the top and looking at it cumulatively, what you're gonna find is we got visits to spenders. We just take the spenders over the visits now, that's 62,500 over a million to get us to a visit to spender rate of 6.25. So we're almost to that 3% conversion rate that we've talked a bit about. That's sort of the, the aspirational target that a lot of people strive for in the Amazon world. And so that's kind of in a nutshell, how we would calculate buyers to spenders conversion rate. Now, if you're looking to pursue this a little bit further, look at some tools that maybe you can track this for you. you I obviously always go back and talk about Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a tool that you can use. It's freely available. Uh, for anyone to install on an e-commerce store, and I highly encourage you to install it. You may be working with another shopping cart like a Shopify or a Magento or a WooCommerce or all the other different e-commerce shop shopping carts out there. And they may have some of this detail there in front of you. But if not, what you can do with here if with Google Analytics is you can understand each of the drop-off points within your funnel if you go to the e-commerce reports and you look at the checkout behavior and so we're going to do a bonus lesson towards the end of this and look at you know how do we calculate this and how do we look at these reports a little bit more in depth but you know for argument's sake what we're looking at today is we've been looking at all sessions your visits your browsers and shoppers and then you've got your buyers and now your spenders and those spenders are people that get all the way to checkout you know at this point we're at 1.6 percent of the overall total sessions through to checkout so not, you know, we're well below that 6% we just looked at, but within that particular step of people that add to cart versus those that go to checkout or from your buyers to your spenders, we're looking at about a 19.5% conversion rate. Now, again, these numbers are just for illustration purposes, but this is meant to show you how you can use this report to calculate your own buyer to spender conversion rate or your total visits to buyer or spender conversion rate as well. And so when we get to the last step tomorrow, you'll see that this conversion rate here is at about 0.1, which is a lot lower than the 3% we're trying to shoot for. But what we'll show you tomorrow is the math to cap it off and look at how do we get all the way down to 3%. So that in a nutshell is today's quick lesson on buyers to spenders and how we convert them. Tomorrow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the total conversion margin formula, and we're gonna look at all of the things combined related to the total conversion margin formula. And so what tomorrow we'll do is a look at that conversion funnel end to end, and we'll look at all of the math that we've kind of just been going over the last couple of days and see how do we calculate your total conversion rate for your e-commerce store. So with that, I thank you for joining me today. Like it was again, short, sweet to the point, hopefully. It is Saturday, so I thank you for being here on a Saturday morning. But again, I ask you as always to be present, connect with others, and go make an impact in someone's life today. Thanks for watching and I'll stop the recording and we'll take any questions that anyone might have. As always, to be present. So it looks like there's no questions today so far, but that's okay. It is Saturday. I don't want to keep you folks for too long, 
So thanks for being here. Thanks again for taking the time to enjoy your coffee with me this morning. And tomorrow we're gonna to look back at the total conversion formula and we're gonna look at the total conversion rate of your conversion funnel all the way through. So thanks again for watching today. And next week, just as a quick teaser, we're gonna to get to that fourth step of the profit litmus test, where we're gonna look at your customer margin tree and all the sort of steps related to your customer's experience along the way. So thanks for watching again and have a great Saturday. If I don't talk to you till then, see you tomorrow.